if you have states like Florida and Texas and others who are not going to accept a CBDC, it's not going to happen. Okay. So I think we've passed the, the, the point of highest risk there on, okay. on government policy. And you, you notice when China shut down effectively Bitcoin. Now, it's curious. They shut it down, but they, they didn't rule holding it illegal. They just said no one could ever buy it again, right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of them hold it, right? But um, when they shut down Bitcoin effectively, it went elsewhere. You can't shut it down. There's no choke to th no throat to choke. Right. In this recent interview with Kathy Wood on Meet Kevin podcast, we heard her discuss the potential of Bitcoin as a revolutionary asset class and its future. Wood emphasizes the importance of understanding Bitcoin's underlying technology and its potential to reshape the financial landscape. At the time of this discussion, Bitcoin's price is around $63,000 with a 2% increase in the last 24 hours and a 5% increase in the last five days, with 19.72 million Bitcoins in circulation out of 21 million. Kathy Wood addresses recent market trends, the impact of macroeconomic factors on cryptocurrency, and ARK's investment strategy in the digital asset space. Before we dive into this discussion, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel. Now let's hear more of this interesting interview with Meet Kevin and Kathy Wood. That's happening now. Uh, the Egyptian pound, many people don't yeah. know this, dropped 40% yeah. in March. Yeah. Malay and Argentina, you have Nigeria, the Nera, mm -hmm. down 50% in the last year. Yeah. Think about it. Those people oh, yeah. have their purchasing power and wealth in those currencies. Gone. They're now, they're, they're thinking mm -hmm. a little more carefully about, I need an insurance policy here. Interesting. And, um, and I was just in El Salvador, had the opportunity and privilege to meet President Bukele who uh, is centering his success now, yep. now that he's, he's gotten rid of the gangs effectively, and I can tell you I felt pretty safe there. So uh, on Bitcoin and AI, he's really smart. If you're a leader, mm -hmm. and you, th that economy is only $30 billion, NVIDIA is a $3.3 .3 trillion <laughs> dollar com a, a company, right? Yeah. $30 billion dollar country. Uh, harnessing two of the most important technologies out there, mm. uh, making, uh, putting in place, and I went there with Art Laffer actually, yeah. um, who is now consulting with El Salvador oh, wow. and yeah, hel helping them. He, that's that's his giving back in in this world. He feels very strongly about it. Um, this will increase El Salvador's standing in the world i think yeah. their economy its economy could go up tenfold under bukele's five-year term mm -hmm. just because of those two technologies You're and being built on trust and real innovation and versus transparency corruption. Yeah. Yeah. and, okay, like and you know appreciation of reserves some mm -hmm. of which are in bitcoin now yeah. right. and not seeing a run on the bank uh you know you have the appreciating currency uh, not the depreciating currency huh. now they're already tied to the dollar so uh, you know I, I i think i think the bet here is he's betting on a virtuous cycle why would you want to go back to okay. that why okay why That's a good point. and you know in terms of how are we going to break down? government? <laughs> no, no, break the yeah the, the chokehold <laughs> on on yeah. How, I think young people um, are our hope, as they you know always are. I really do, and I think that's where we're seeing Bitcoin becoming an election year issue. And who would have thought? I mean, everybody thought by now we'd have a CBDC. That's true. Central bank digital currency, but that wasn't going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we live in Florida. Governor DeSantis, this is a states' rights issue. Governor DeSantis said, no way will we allow a CBDC into our state. As we just heard Kathy Wood discuss Bitcoin's impact on the world and how its monetary policy is attracting institutions, let's dive deeper into her insights. Wood emphasizes Bitcoin's potential as a global reserve currency and its role as a hedge against policy uncertainty, particularly in emerging markets. She highlights the growing institutional interest in Bitcoin, attributing it to its rules-based system and the security of its blockchain network. She sees it as a transformative force in the global economy, potentially reshaping how we think about money and value transfer in the digital age.
Now let's hear Kathy take a question from a young investor as she discusses more on crypto and stocks. What do you think blockchain stocks and crypto? What do I think of blockchain stocks and crypto generally? Well, we're ver very excited about crypto assets, so Bitcoin, Ether, Solana. Now, these are not stocks. Um, when people are talking about crypto and stocks, they're either talking about the miners. Um, we're not invested in the miners. We tend to stay away from highly cyclical commoditized businesses. Now they do have a data center play, but we still think it's a kind of a boom bust world. Um, so, so we're not there. Our derivative plays, well, there's one there's one name that uh, I, I'm not supposed to be selling our, our funds uh, directly, but we're very proud that ARKB, our, our spot Bitcoin ETF, has done so well, and so many people um, are getting access to Bitcoin because we think it's a, a, a real monetary revolution, so we think that's important. You can play that in the stock market. Other companies like Coinbase and uh, Square or Block, which owns uh, Cash App, which is getting very creative with Bitcoin and the rest of the world especially, uh, is interesting. Robinhood is now, mm -hmm. it wants to become a digital wallet. So when we're looking, our, our choice is to look for those companies that are going to um, give us a digital wallet mm -hmm. because we're not going to have many digital wallets. It's a little bit like credit cards. We don't want too many credit cards. We think, we think, uh, we think we're just at the beginning, even though we got our first exposure to Bitcoin when it was $250 in 2015. Now at $64,000, I think it is, mm -hmm. 64, 65,000. Uh, we think it has miles to go. Uh, because we think it's a new monetary system and many people are going to adopt it around the world because it's going to prevent inflation from taking away purchasing power and destroying wealth. Mm. Well, the interesting thing we learned about Bitcoin during um, the, the regional bank meltdown in 2023 mm. is it became a risk-off asset. It was people were saying, "Wait a minute, uh, uh, maybe I need this little insurance policy here because yeah. this banking thing's happening, and maybe we're all going down again." So m people are trying to dissect that. But you know, the regional banks kept going down. Uh, Bitcoin went up before the Nasdaq did, but just by days. Okay. But still, it was one of the okay. first. It was one of the first okay. to, and yeah. and that was pretty soon after. Um, uh, um, Sam Bankman Fried went down. Yeah, so, so that was interesting. It really yeah. was a wow, this is not just a risk on asset. It could okay. be a risk off asset. It's an insurance policy against counterparty risk. As we conclude this discussion of Kathy Wood's interview on Meet Kevin's podcast, it's clear that she maintains a positive outlook on Bitcoin's future and its potential to disrupt traditional financial systems. Her insights provide valuable perspective for investors considering Bitcoin as part of their portfolio strategy. We'd love to hear your thoughts on some questions. Does Bitcoin remove government power? If currencies failed, would this finally be the push to make governments implement Bitcoin? Thank you for tuning in to Only the Savvy. If you enjoyed this discussion, please subscribe, like, and share our video for more engaging content diving into the innovative world of decentralized technologies.